Hello, this is Solar PV TV from Solar Power International 2014 from Las Vegas. Today we have uh, for the first time the panel discussion, visionary panel discussion, not only with uh, solar gurus like Arturo, like Alex, or like Dean, or like Robert, but for the first time we are bringing famous people, famous uh, technology, clean tech uh, technology visionaries. But today also, for the first time, I will not moderate this discussion. I will just give a floor to Jigar, who will make it better than me. Thank you, Jigar. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. The topic today is really where is solar going uh, in 2020. Uh, I wanted to start by having everybody introduce themselves. Just uh, tell us uh, who you are and uh, maybe some of, the, some of the things you may have uh, seen on the show today. Tony Siba, author of Clean Disruption, number three on the Amazon energy list. Uh, yeah, uh, lecturer in entrepreneurship, uh, disruption, and clean energy at Stanford University. I am Alex Levron. I'm managing global solar business for ABB. I'm Arturo Herrero. I'm the chief strategic officer at Ginkgo Solar uh, for almost five years in that company and willing to have this growth for the next other 15 years, hopefully. So my name is Robert Benedict. I'm with Recom. And uh, the things that I've seen at the show that is most important to me is the right people being here, the companies that uh, are here to do business, uh, to learn about the industry, and a high volume of people, which shows that our industry is growing. Hi, I'm Chip Cummins. I'm the chairman and founder of the American Renewable Energy Institute and the R-Day Summit. Delighted to be here and to see uh, and witness the growth of solar, particularly over the past four years, unprecedented. Dean Solon, Scholz Technologies Group, I'm the president. We're launching multiple platforms of products here at the show, which, uh, which will hopefully disrupt uh, 2015 ways of installing solar. Dean, let me start with you and then come back this way. Okay. I'd love to hear your uh, perspective on what you think the most important changes have been in the last five years in the solar industry. The one thing I think that uh, is happening quickly is the reliability of the systems. I, I keep preaching the same thing show after show. But reliability is the number one topic that has to be brought into these systems because these are 25-year-plus systems. And if they're, if they're designed to go five years, the industry is going to fail. So the, the point we're stressing is better, faster, more reliable systems. Least amount of SKUs, the least amount of part numbers. Get it in the ground as cheaply and as possibly as you can with the best equipment. So when, when the big utilities are buying this, they don't think they're buying a, a fluke kind of crazy system. They're buying a system that's as reliable as their nuclears or their coal or their combined cycle or any other power source that they're purchasing has to have the same reliability attached to it. Chip, you've been following the solar industry for a long time. Last five years, what surprised you the most about the solar industry? Well, Jigger, you know, uh, since I met you and uh, tra tracked the uh, success of Sun Edison, I've really been shocked at how, uh, how the price of solar has come down, particularly uh, in the last uh, uh, five years uh, due to um, uh, the activity in China, I, I think, but also uh, the rapid implementation. I understand that we just added another uh, 40 gigawatts in one year, giving fully one-third growth in the solar sector. And I think the grid parity is really uh, what's been driving this, uh, this phenomenal growth of solar. Uh, it's actually, I think, succeeded wind. Wind owned that territory for about uh, 10 years at least, maybe 15. It's just uh, absolutely the fastest growing uh, growth sector uh, in the renewable energy industry and um, uh, certainly is uh, boosting the economies and, and particularly excited about solar in the developing world. Robert, same question to you. Last five years, what's been the most surprising, you know, sort of positive outcome out of the solar industry that you've noticed? Well, I, to me, the number one thing is finance really came on board. When I came into the industry about nine and a half years ago, there were only two companies that were doing financing, SMUD and GE Capital. That was it. Now, if you have a project, a real project that will make a difference, uh, that can be developed, that project will get financed. The other thing I think uh, that uh, is really exciting about what's being done is the uh, volume of projects has intensified with the coming uh, ITC uh, ending 2016. I think people realize 
that we got to do it now. And what that will allow is for the grid parity to take place because growth, money creates grid parity. Arturo, you've been in the industry for a long time. Did you ever think that uh, China, Japan, and the U.S. would be the three largest markets in the world uh, in, uh, in 2014? How, how has solar changed for you in the last five years? Yeah, well, we were not expecting that uh, China was coming to be so big market, but uh, it was a must in order to change the pollution that we have been suffering there for the last years. But it is true, and this is one of the disruption that I would say that has been creating this big growth in solar, has been probably the um, diversifying countries and entering in many emerging markets that nobody was expecting uh, outside Europe. At that time, we were mainly focusing, if you remember, in Germany, Italy or Spain, and I can count right now more than 80 countries where we are growing, uh, growing very st strongly, and we expect that to to be even better in the next coming years. Countries, countries like here, uh, USA, that will be taking the lead in, in, in some of the growth, but also countries like uh, South America, like Chile, like Mexico, Brazil, where we are very active in Ginkgo Solar, or countries like um, Middle East that we will see coming soon in the next coming years. Robert, ABB has been in the business for a very long time, but I think it, it has really made a huge commitment to our industry in the last five years. And so help us understand sort of what you saw in the last five years that really convinced the company to, to jump in with both feet. Well, well what we see is uh, one, the grid parity is, is approaching now and it becomes uh, quite attractive for the natural growth of the solar industry as a stand on, on its own uh, financial uh, benefits. Number two, the, the growth of the industry in uh, the emerging uh, and new markets in Africa and Latin America and Asia are quite uh, significant and adding uh, quite uh, high volume to our benefits in the future. And the third is that uh, we see a, a need for the new technologies, uh, for a hybrid technology, for uh, expansion of the microgrid, for the growth of the storage. And this adds uh, value to our industry in many, many areas that uh, ABB has a uh, contribution to add. Tony, you've written a fantastic book, Clean Disruption, but you've also written a previous book yes. around Solar Trillions. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. what, what caused you to write the book? I mean, what did you see when you wrote Solar Trillions that you, know, you may have like, noticed mm -hmm. that we actually did follow your prescription, I think, in the last five years? Yeah, I mean, when I wrote Solar Trillions, which came out maybe five years ago, I called it Trillions because I believe that solar was gonna be the world's number one source of energy. And it's gonna be a multi-terawatt, multi-trillion uh, source of energy. And at the time, people would look at me like I had 10 heads. They would be like, solar, are you serious? Trillion, uh, do you mean million? Um, and you know, basically the, the idea that solar was gonna be the world's number one source of energy was not in the public consciousness. Even within the solar industry, I think the solar industry itself tends to discount its own benefits and its own growth potential. Um, so five years later, um, you know, to go back to your first question, what has happened has been nothing short of amazing. Um, the cost of PV has come down 80, 90%. The cost of capital has come down from, you know, essentially paying credit card rates to paying closer to mortgage rates, which is where it should be. Um, some markets have shown that solar, say Australia, have shown that solar can grow from zero to mainstream, 20, 25% in just four years. Uh, and of course, the penetration in, um, countries like Germany where it's hit up to 50% on beautiful sunny afternoons, all of these things combined have been shocking and have taken solar from something called alternative to a mainstream source of energy. So, so keep going and tell me what it is that you think we're missing Yeah. or, and that, or, or what will be some of the sort of barriers that you see you know, to really reaching your vision 
in this area by 2020. You know, I yeah. mean, you know that that. What do you think it is? Is it workforce? Is it materials? Is it cost? Is it you know what yeah. is it? So I think solar essentially is a technology disruption. Uh, this 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 is what uh, the internet was 20 years ago. Um, and so in technology, we keep improving the technology, the cost, the efficiency, and so on and so forth. And what I've seen in solar, so from 2000 to the end of 2013, solar grew at a compounded annual growth rate of 41 percent. Um, if you keep, so I'm an early employee at a little company called Cisco Systems. Um, and 20 years ago, when I saw this internet curve, and I'm like, whoa, this thing is going to be a billion nodes inside of 15 years, people look at me like I was crazy. Now, I'm saying the same thing about solar. Solar has grown at 40 plus percent compound year after year after year from 2000 to the end of 2013. And this year it's doing that again. Now, if we keep that CAGR, that compound growth rate going, we're going to be a terawatt industry by 2020. And not only that, it's not just going to happen because governments are going to want it. It's going to happen despite that. It's going to happen because costs are going down. It's going to happen because, look, grid parity is old news. We're already there in many countries. I mean, in Australia, solar is 40% cheaper than what what the, 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 the utilities are selling. Well, let me let me see if, uh, yeah. Alex, what do you think? I mean, you know, the next five years, you know, what do you think is going to be the biggest barrier that we have to focus our mind on and really overcome to get to our goals? In my opinion, the next uh, barrier that we see is uh, stability of the grid uh, with uh, the population, growing population of distributed uh, sources of energy. I think we have the solutions for that, so st new standards, storage, the grid uh, size and so on and so forth. But it still uh, should be considered as a next step that will allow us to grow the, the renewable energy even faster than we're growing today. Arturo? Well, in my 14 years in this industry since we met, uh, we have seen a lot of up and downs. But I, I used to say that all the trend has been exponentially growing. So even with the up and downs in this industry and the lack sometimes of credibility from, from the financial community, from the investors, at the end of the day, we have seen and we have shown and we have proof that they can rely, they can trust. And there is really a return on the investment coming from the projects on the, on the, on the ground. So going, going over uh, this uh, financial crisis that we are hopefully uh, um, over overcoming right now what we will see is more financing coming to the to the projects more financing coming to to investment and we will see larger and larger projects on the site on ground as we are seeing here in the USA but also in in some South American countries and probably in Africa it will be the next the next uh, continent where we will see large of investment for large scale projects where we will see a lot of booming again reaching this terabyte uh, industry and also what we expect to happen is that there is enough rules and regulations in order to make it easy without subsidies so right, at the grid party but, but, but what's the barrier i mean do you see a bottleneck in developers a bottleneck in in experienced uh, workforce a bottleneck in you know from my point of view has been financing right now we are seeing a little bit more money coming to the to the to the to the industry and probably after that we will have to see how we can improve the, the connection to the grid in some of these countries. So financing, technology, connection to the grid and, and probably regulation it will be the, the other bottleneck. What do you think Robert? Uh, well definitely re um, regulations um, but I actually my belief is not so much that it's the government anymore. That has been the past. I believe the future is called a quantum leap in consciousness, meaning consciousness about energy. So my view is that energy is everything when it comes to industry, everything. If you don't have it, you got no industry. That is not the consciousness of the population. But you turn off that light 
make that light not available, not be able to turn on that machine, not be able to uh, move uh, equipment, vehicles, let me tell you, they'll wake up super fast. So what I believe is that the quantum leap is on its way. And I mean it's on its way because there's a lot of solar out there, people see it, and when they connect those dots that this energy source saves our national security, gives us what we need as an economy, that's when the quantum leap will dramatically take place. So Chip, give me the same answer around the micro and the macro, right? So you live in Colorado. Help me understand where Colorado is going to go by 2020. And then help me understand where do you think the emerging markets that you were talking about, you think are going to go by 2020? And what are the barriers in both those places? Sure. In uh, Colorado, you know, we're, <coughs> we're experiencing uh, a, a tremendous amount of growth, uh, thanks in large part to the work of uh, Governor Ritter and uh, now uh, Governor Hickenlooper. Uh, we are, are very, very... Um, uh, bullish on, on solar, and it, it has been um, growing in leaps and bounds. Um, I like what you were talking about in terms of, of the, um, the educational piece, as people become aware that this is actually not only better for their um, health, but also better for their uh, wallets, is, uh, is where the growth really um, comes from. At the, uh, at the AREI Institute, um, we talk in terms of the five E's, and it starts with energy, that's the sun, and it goes to environment, that's the earth, and the third one is uh, education, that's the people. The fourth um, is employment, the people need to go to work implementing that superstructure. And the E's all add up to the fact that it's everything under the sun, and solar is the defining renewable energy source. Uh, wind is a subset. So in Colorado, where we've been experiencing enormous growth, we also are, are looking at uh, the global markets, the emerging markets uh, in Africa, as you mentioned, in Asia. These are where the, uh, the real uh, uh, growth opportunities, I think. Uh, the environment simply cannot handle having more fossil fuels burned uh, obviously climate change is in, in full force and so the, the biggest and, and, and the most effective way to, to uh, actually uh, uh, address this is renewable energy and solar simply is at the lead of that pack. So Dean, you talked about you know, reducing SKUs, making these simpler, et cetera. But in the next five years, how do you actually implement that? I mean, not, it's not just talking about it, but how do you really get that vision done? From our standpoint, not to sound like a, a commercial, but we're bringing new systems every solar show that completely change the adoption of how the solar field is put in place. And the biggest thing for the barrier that I see is how a system is installed in Southern California versus say Massachusetts versus Chicago or Florida is completely different from, from inspector to inspector, from codes to codes. Right, it really makes a mess of, of the systems because how you design, I, I hate to call out LA County, but how you design for LA County is not how you design for other places, right? So that makes it very difficult for companies to want to do business and get those systems installed. So if, if we could more standardize the installation methods, the regulations, the, the National Electrical Code, right? I think that's the thing that slows down systems the most right now, besides people wanting to turn solar political, which I think Solar show by solar show, you're not hearing solar on TV so much. Maybe you'll hear it another week from now when the elections start, but it'll go away again, right? But the biggest thing is the codes and how it's installed. So Tony's talking terawatts, right? And so why don't we end with uh, prediction, right? Give me the number, the number of gigawatts we're going to deploy in 2020, the single year. I'll say 120. Wow, well, that's, uh, it's, 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 it's totally uh, growing at exponential rates. Um, I, uh, I would love to see 120, but I'm going to say 50. 50? We're already at 50. Come on now. Okay, I'll revise that up to uh, 250. <laughs> All right, Robert. Uh, so I, um, because I have a strong belief that uh, this, the whole consciousness movement change, 
I believe will be more like a terawatt of installed. Wow, Arturo. I don't know. I don't know if you could go to get a terawatt, but give me your number. Uh, I don't want to have so much pressure from my from my board. <laughs> so probably, probably in our strategic plans, uh, we were counting uh, next year to reach probably 60 gigawatts, and in the next uh, six years to reach 2020 to reach around 200 megawatts. 200, 200 gigawatts. gigawatts. Fantastic. 200 gigawatt. Alex. Uh, I think the numbers will be closer to 80 to 90 uh, gigawatt, meaning double from what we see today. And because the limiting factor should be taken into account as well. So I, I would say 80 to 90 gigawatts. Tony, are you reconfirming? In, uh, in 2020 alone, that year? Yeah, yeah. So look, we're doubling every two years. We're going to be 200 at the end of this year. 400 at the end of 2016 installed yes uh 800 at the end of 2018 you know one and a half at least by 2020 installed so in 2020 and what's the number and it should be about 500 gigawatts in 2020 and i'll tell you why i'll tell you why i mean this is not just an exponential growth curve i did the numbers for 2020 um if you assume an installed per watt on residential homes of one dollar, and we're already there in many markets, a dollar, a dollar ten, and you finance it with your mortgage, meaning three, four, five percent, then you get to an on-site generation of solar on your business or home of four to five cents. Now four to five cents is less than the cost of transmission. It doesn't matter how much coals or nukes or gas generates, because even if they generate at zero, they won't be able to compete with on-site generation of solar. So it won't be the green thing as an environmental green, it'll be the green thing. I mean, essentially, the whole system of centralized generation of energy is going to collapse. And that's going to happen in the U.S. Southwest 2020. So I'll, I'll, I'll go on the record on this one, even though I'm moderating. And, you know, I've been predicting this stuff for a while, and I think I've been pretty accurate. Um, I think it'll be above 200, probably in the 220 gigawatt range. And my number, I think, in terms of kilowatt hour price, un largely unsubsidized, we'll have some some subsidies, but large unsubsidized will be in the 10 cent range, which I think is pretty amazing and opens up, you know, probably three quarters of the world. So with that, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us here today and uh, turning back over to Tomas. Okay. So at the end, uh, I would like to everybody at the panel discussion uh, to make some uh, small uh, physical exercise. So I will give you some uh, something. Thumbs for solar. Thanks for solar. Thumbs up for solar. Yay. Thumbs for solar. <laughs>